Hey, and welcome back. Today, I'll be talking about a tank. Most of the time, I don't. Today, we'll talk about the Leopard 1. Germany is known for their tanks, and the Leopard 1 is part of that heritage. Today, we'll examine the Leopard 1, and I'll try my best not to talk about Germany mains. However, I am making no promises. This is on you for choosing a German tank. The Leopard 1 story starts shortly after Germany lost its Second World War in a row. The Bundeswehr was formed in the 1950s after Germany narrowly escaped the Morgenthau Plan proposed by the Western Allies. This meant that Germany would have its industrial plants destroyed, especially in the Ruhr area, which takes away its capability to produce arms forever. Seeing as how many level 14 Leopard 2 PZBTL123s are in this game, Germany not being able to produce tanks anymore would have been the ideal ending. When the Bundeswehr was formed, they were using American tanks like the M41, M47, and M48. The M47 was leased off to a bunch of European states for free, including France to supplement their fleet of ex Wormack Panther tanks. While France at the time was experimenting on new designs like the AMX-50 and the Lorraine 40T and the Sumuas, the arrival of the M47s proved the projects very costly and redundant compared to the literally free M47s. Germany and France agreed that the M47 was already obsolete by the time of their delivery, considering the fact that the M48 was already in production in the United States. This led to a joint program in 1957 between the Germans and the French called the Standard Panzer Program. In 1958, Italy joined the program. In 1959, the first prototype came out and initially used a 19mm gun. However, Rheinmetall was testing a 105mm gun of their own firing a new French heat round. Thus, the requirements were modified to be 105mm. And because this is the Cold War, you know the L7 is going to be involved somehow. The L7 and Western tanks go hand in hand like Gaijin in another round of Abrams nerfs. So the L7 competed with the Rheinmetall gun, and naturally, it won, with 1,500 guns being ordered for use on the upcoming Standard Panzer. The Germans attempted to replace the M41 with a light vehicle retaining the 90mm gun known as the RU-251 around the same time, but the program did not progress past the prototype stage. The 19mm was retained and later used on the Kanonenjag Panzer tank destroyer. The Leopard 1 prototype A2 with all the upgrades was built in 1960 and used a Mercedes-Benz MBA38 engine. The L7 gun was modified with a slope breech to allow the gun to depress 9 degrees as per the requirement for the standard Panzer. The breech was modified and the modifications allowed it to be renamed the L7A3. The A2 prototype originally had a 12.7mm ranging machine gun like the Chieftain, but was removed in favor of a coincidence rangefinder like any sensible tank designer would do. In 1963, the Leopard 1 in the French design known as the AMX-30 underwent comparative trials which the Leopard easily won. Conveniently, the French did a classic French tactic and backed out of the program and purchased the AMX-30. Italy, observing the trials, saw the advantages of the Leopard 1 and decided to buy the M60A1 in what would be considered Italy's biggest L so far since any battle of World War II that they were in. The first production series Leopard 1 was delivered in 1966, replacing the M47 in Bundeswehr service. It used the unstabilized L7A3 105mm gun. By then, it was using licensed production ammunition from the Britain and the United States, such as the DM-13 being the shot L-28A1, the DM-502 being the M-393 HEP, 
and the DM-12 being the M456 heat round. 60 of these rounds can be carried, 42 of which are mounted beside the driver in a manner that carries on the tradition of the Centurion that motivates the driver to drive better by stashing an ammo depot beside him. 10 shells are mounted vertically beside the loader, 3 behind him, and 6 more are mounted under the gun in front of him. By carrying a standard mix of 31 APDS rounds, 3 smoke rounds, and 26 hash rounds, the Leopard 1 ensures that the entire right half of the tank is obliterated after a single hit. The initial batches had MG-1 machine guns as coaxial and pintle-mounted air defense guns, but they were eventually replaced by the MG-3. The gun sight used by the initial Leopard 1 variant was the TEM-1A rangefinder. With TEM standing for these words on the screen because I'm sure when I mispronounce it, the Gestapo will pick me up at my house and send me to Ukraine. It had a stereoscopic rangefinder which was visible on both sides of the turret, often called the Kawaii Cat Ears of the Leopard 1. The TZF-1A8X sight was also available for the gunner, and the commander, having his own separate sight, the TRP-1A was a 6-20X sight that could rotate freely independent of the turret. The box on the turret of the Leopard houses the XSW-30U searchlight that can work in infrared and white light modes. When not in use, this is often stored at the rear of the turret. The engine was the Mercedes-Benz 838-CAM500 engine. It was liquid-cooled, 10-cylinder, 4-stroke, and multi-fuel, although it was often run on F54 diesel fuel. It put out 818 horsepower. The tank was driven by a ZF4 HP250 transmission that had four forward gears and two reverse gears and could neutral steer. The reverse gears and neutral steering were influenced by the French requirements for the standard Panzer to facilitate a hasty retreat. The original weight requirement of the standard Panzer program was 35 tons, but the production Leopard 1 weighed 40 tons. The first modernization program of the Leopard 1 came in 1970. It received a Cadillac gauge stabilizer that allowed it to fire on the move. A thermal sleeve was mounted on the L7A3 gun and the IR night sights were replaced by passive image intensification sights or the BIV sights. Tracks were also replaced with tracks that could mount grousers for snow traction. When not in use, 20 of these grousers would be mounted on the front glazes plate, which you could see in the Leopard A1A1 and the Leopard 1A5. Metal side skirts were also installed to protect against low caliber heat. These upgrades increased the weight to 41.5 tons. This was designated the Leopard A1 or later the Leopard 1A1 when the Leopard 2 entered service. The fifth batch of Leopard 1A1 tanks received a new cast turret which was hard to distinguish from the Leopard 1A1 but nevertheless received the designation Leopard 1A2. Its most noted upgrade was an improved NBC system. The next batch of Leopard tanks received spaced armor in the turret and a wedge-shaped applique armor on the mantlet and upgraded sight for the commander was installed. The armor layout on the turret looked very close to the Leopard 2K turret system. This was designated the Leopard 1A3. A fire control system was introduced in the next batch in 1974 and was redesignated the Leopard 1A4. The new fire control system necessitated a reduction of ammo load for space considerations and was reduced to 55 rounds from 60 rounds. Five shells were removed from the turret. The second modernization wave of the Leopards occurred in 1975 to 1977, which featured the ever popular extra armor on the turret from Blom and Voss. Leopard A1s upgraded under this program were redesignated the Leopard A1A1 or the Leopard 1A1A1 if you love the German designation system. The system that brought you bangers like the DM-12 that could mean the 105mm DM-12, 120mm DM-12, or 110mm DM-12 for the Panzerfaust III. Or the DM-11 that could mean the 35mm DM-11A1, or the rifle caliber 5.56 DM-11A1. But anyways, the PZB-200 Night Sight, formerly fitted on early Leopard 2 models was mounted on the Leopard 1A1A1s and were thus redesignated the Leopard 1A1A2. 
The PCB200 was mounted on the right hand side of the mantlet. The last big modernization of the Leopard 1 came in the 1980s when the Leopard 1 was expected to continue service beyond the 2000s. At the time, the initial opponents of the Leopard 1 that was the T55 and T62 were being replaced by the T64, T72, and T80 in the group of Soviet forces in Germany, and thus were being obsolete compared to these tanks. In response, 1,225 Leopard 1A1A1 tanks were to be upgraded to the Leopard 1A5 standard, although only 1,224 were actually upgraded after one tank was destroyed to a fire. The upgrades included the EMES-18 fire control system, which incorporated a laser rangefinder, thermal sight, and ballistic computers developed from the EMES-15 from the Leopard 2 and shared a lot of common parts. The Germans also started licensing the production of a new ammo type from Israel, the M111 and M413 armor-piercing fin-stabilized discarding Sabuk rounds known locally as the DM23 and DM33 respectively. A new turret control system was installed made by SRK or Steuer und Regelkonzept which replaced the Cadillac gauge stabilizer. All vehicles with the Cadillac gauge stabilizer system was replaced by the SRK system in 1988. A Leopard 1A5 was also fitted with the L44 120mm gun during the upgrade process and the Leopard 1A5 was rated to mount the L44, but a full-on upgrade to the L44 gun was deemed impractical. The Leopard 1A5 was eventually acquired by nations like Italy, Greece, Denmark, and Brazil and found its way to the present-day conflict in the Ukraine. A special test platform based on the Leopard 1 was done by Germany to test a 3-axis stabilizer on a 105mm gun. Known in War Thunder as the Term 3, it had a turret that was stabilized on all axes including the roll axis. A 30mm gun was also coaxially mounted, and the turret was a round capsule that housed the gunner and commander and the autoloader. The driver was in the hull. Only one was built in the 60s and the 3-axis stabilizer concept was eventually abandoned. In other nations, the Leopard upgrade program went slightly differently. Belgium's Leopard 1 BE is patterned after the Leopard 1 baseline but replaced the MG3 with the FN mag and later received a Cadillac gauge stabilizer after 1970. Some of these vehicles were upgraded with the Sabka fire control system that incorporated a laser rangefinder and a crosswind sensor. The Sabka system was incorporated in the Leopard AS1 and Leopard C1 tanks for Australia and Canada. The Belgian Leopard 1BE was fitted with the Leopard 1A1A1 armor package and a new fire control system that incorporated a thermal sight and laser rangefinder and was called the Leopard 1A5BE or Leopard 1BE Modernized and some were eventually sold to Brazil in 1995. Recently, a new upgrade to the Leopard 1A5BE was given which fitted a Cockerill 3015 turret to the Leopard 1A5BE hull. It had a 12-round autoloader with a 105mm gun with thermals and laser rangefinder very similar to the X. C8 turret on the CV9105. Because of the turret ring difference, adapter rings were installed on the turret ring to allow the turret to be fit. In Australia, the Leopard 1 is known as the Leopard AS1 and were based on the Leopard 1A3 with the aforementioned Belgian Sabka fire control system. It was delivered in 1974 and remained in service until the early 2000s, which was not upgraded or modernized when it was replaced with the M1A1 AIM. Though support vehicles based on the Leopard 1 remain in service with Australia until Australia finally replaces them completely by the M88A2 Hercules. Canada's Leopard 1s are similar to the Australia Leopard AS1s. They were based off the Leopard 1A3 with the Belgian Sabka fire control system. Canada's barter scale managed to get Krauss Maffei to buy Canada's Centurion fleet in exchange for the Leopard C1s. What Krauss Maffei would do to the Centurions? Nothing. They sold them off to Austria to be stripped off of their turrets as static defenses. However, while the Australian Leopards remained the same until 2004, the Leopard C1s were upgraded to the Leopard C1 Mexa standard with an applique armor package. 
The Canadian Leopard 1A5 upgrade was named the Leopard T2 and was completed in 1999 and was made out of existing German Leopard 1A5 turrets fitted onto existing Leopard C1 hulls. The Sabco fire control system was replaced by the EMES-18 on the Leopard 1A5s. The Leopard C2 received the Mexus armor package as well and was redesignated the Leopard C2A1, or the Leopard C2 Mexus. The C2A1 served shortly alongside the Leopard 2A6M Can in Afghanistan before finally being retired in 2007. Canada is still trying to offload the Leopard C2A1 to any military, recently Jordan, but there are no takers and is most likely going to be turned into target practice vehicles should they fail to sell. Italy purchased 200 Leopard 1 tanks in 1970 after purchasing some M60A1s and were delivered in 1971 and 1972. A further 400 were built by Otto Melara under license between 1974 and 1978. 120 more were delivered in 1983. In 1995, Leopard 1A5 turrets were purchased by Italy from Germany and fitted onto existing Leopard 1A1 hulls to upgrade them to the Leopard 1A5 standard. They served until 2008 until being taken out of service completely. The Dutch evaluated the Chieftain, MBT-70, and Leopard 1 for their next MBT in the late 60s. The Leopard 1 was chosen by the Royal Netherlands Army in 1968 and an order for 468 was placed, being delivered between 1969 and 1972. From this point on, the Dutch and the Americans worked closely on the upgrades to the Leopard 1 NL. From US radio sets to custom smoke dischargers, the Leopard 1 NL was more its own upgrade package than any Leopard model with custom add-ons. Honeywell provided the gun stabilizers instead of Cadillac gauge and also provided improved optics to fire the British Sable rounds. Later on, all 468 Leopard 1 NLs received the A1A1 armor add-on from Blom & Voss, along with the Honeywell Zeiss EMES-12A3 AFSL2 fire control system, and was renamed the Leopard 1V, with the V standing for Verbetterd or Improved. Leopard 1 NA Leopard 1 Vs were sold to various countries, including Chile, which then relied on Israel for their 105mm rounds. With Chilean Leopard 1 Vs being confirmed to have used M156 Hesh and M413 or DM33 APFS DS rounds. Lahat ATGMs were also allegedly successfully tested on Chilean Leopard 1 Vs. Norway ordered 78 Leopard 1s in 1965 and received them in 1971. In 1989, the original 78 tanks were upgraded locally, replacing the hydraulic system with an all-electric system and the EMES-18 was installed which brought them to the Leopard 1A5 standard. These were known as the Leopard 1A5 and O. 92 Leopard 1A1A4s were ordered in 1995 with 33 of them to be upgraded to the Leopard 1A5 standard and entered service as the Leopard 1A5 NO2. The rest of the 59 Leopard 1A1 A4s were given some upgrades, but not to the Leopard 1A5 standard, and was therefore known as the Leopard 1A1 NO. Turkey produced a local upgrade to the 1A1 from their stocks of the Leopard T1. Known as the Volkan from Asalsan, it was intended to be a cheaper upgrade to the 1A5 standard. They serve currently alongside the Leopard 1A3 T1s as Turkey supplements to the Leopard 2A4. Well, finally after weeks of procrastinating, the Leopard 1 video is finally done. We can finally move on to bigger and brighter things. I'm going to do a plane video next week and the week after I'll do another tank and we'll put up a poll on the community tab as usual to choose the next tank. Maybe this time the Centurion will finally win. Maybe. But from my track record, everyone who every time I post something, I just the first choice always wins. But anyways, thanks for watching. This has been the Dr. MD. Godspeed.